Hello, Internet. Welcome, uh, welcome to my midweek devotional. My name is Michaelin. I have uh, been going to Bethel for about five, six years now. Been married to my wife, Erin Strand, for about five years now. Um, we have been leading worship numerous times, so you probably see us there at the front of the church. Um, I also do something really, really cool for work. I uh, serve as a missionary, as content creator lead is my specific title for an organization called CIM Media. Now, content creator lead, you might hear that and be like, what is that? That sounds like a fluffy thing. It is, uh, it is, I guess, kind of fluffy. I think it's soft. Um, but it's a job where I get to interact, um, befriend, care for artists, um, and partner them with our platforms to help grow the kingdom of God. Um, that's sort of the Sparks Note version of it. Feel free to come up and ask me about it sometime. Um, but doing that job, I listen to a lot of music and every now and then I'll get a piece of music that'll just really pierce me. It'll really hit my heart. It'll really put me in a place where I think this needs to be heard by people. This needs to be shared. There's a story behind this piece of music that is both profound and accessible. And I just, it's anointed or like all these amazing feelings, which is why I'm so blessed to have a position where I work to be able to share music like that. But also I would like to share it with the internet and share it with people like you uh, who are, you know, taking the bus to school or, or on their drive to work or whatever it may be. Like I just, I love to share these sorts of stories um, because music has this amazing profound nature of being able to take these very simple truths that we can be so guarded to, right? God is love. God is goodness. We put up, we hear that all the time. We put up our walls or whatever. Some non-believers will put up their walls. Jesus loves me, whatever. I hear that all the time. Um, but music has this way of finding this little crack in the, in the, in the foundation, if you will, this little finds the water line and is able to break it open a bit. Right. And it's the same truth. God loves you. That same truth that somebody could say to you every single day as you're leaving church. But music has this way of just getting into your soul a little, a little, it takes a different Avenue. It takes a, it takes the I one around, you know what I mean? It takes a different freeway if I can get real poetic with it. Um, so that's why I really wanted to share this song. If not, um, by the local uh, artist from Grand Prairie, Melissa Bueller. So, um, so here we go. This is obviously about how God is good. Um, if, or if not, God is good when our prayers are answered, when our life is going exactly how we think it should. God is also good if not. So let's get into some of the lyrics here. Melissa uses three verses to help illustrate her point. Um, two of them are scripture. One of them is more personal. The first verse of this is a story of faith, um, is a story of faith in goodness, is a story of faith in God's goodness, even in the face of evil. When you're looking at bad stuff, how do you believe that God is still good? So this is from all the way back to the book of Daniel. I'm going to butcher the names, but bear with me, everybody. The story of Sedrach, Misrach, and Abednego. Nailed it. Um... So that's in the Old Testament. These three young men, they were threatened or they were they were put into a fiery furnace because they didn't bow to an idol. Um, so they were thrown into this fiery furnace. A fourth figure, as scripture tells us, was seen in the furnace, one that looked like the son of God. Beautiful imagery. Um, saved them from that fire. And uh, and then when they stepped out of the fire, they were they were totally fine. So the so that figure saved the three men of certain death. Um, and also use that to turn the heart of Nebuchadnezzar because Nebuchadnezzar burns these three men alive, turns up the furnace seven times hotter than normal, and they come out alive. They didn't even smell of smoke. Obviously, he now had an on-fire faith for God when you get to see a miracle like that up close and personal. But what Melissa is trying to tell us with her song, If Not, is that God's goodness does not depend on what he does for us. Even if we're in a situation where he think, where we think his help should answer our prayers, Right. God is good if or if not. So when they're looking into that fire, I sort of like like to use this analogy. So if they were looking into that fire, they were thinking, God, please deliver us from this. God ended up delivering them in the way that I guess that would probably be their first choice. I just don't want to be burned. I don't want to die. I want to walk out of this furnace alive. But God could have also delivered them by having their bodies perish and accepting their spirits into his kingdom. Could have also saved them that way. Well, one of those is obviously a lot more good from our perspective, the kind where our body doesn't burn burn away. That seems more good. But from God's perspective, it's all good. It's good if our prayers are answered or if our prayers are not answered in that specific situation. Um, so let's continue on here and find where I left my notes. It's an important message to hear, myself included, the message that God's love is not dependent on our own understanding of goodness, but of God's understanding of goodness. From our small perspectives, it would be easy to see only one outcome in which goodness prevails. But God teaches us through countless stories in scripture. And Melissa exemplifies this through her song that God's goodness transcends through all of that. 
Now I had a, uh, yeah, so this is the verse that I, that I pulled out from that. This is half of the first verse that she writes. O king, we see no need to defend ourselves before you. The God we serve, he will deliver us. But even if he does not, he is still good. Take that with you every time you're looking into the fire. Every time you see the flames that you're sure will burn your body. Every time you're, look, you're looking at that mountain and you think this is impossible to climb. This is brutal. I'm never going to make it. God, answer my prayers. If or if not, though, you are still good. Keep that with you because, man, it's so hard. It's so hard to hang on to that truth when we believe that our way is the only way. Let's move on to the second verse. This second verse talks about the story of Joseph and his technicolor dream coat. I'm sure you've heard of it, so I'll spare the details. Essentially, this story illustrates more how God uses bad things for good. In this story, Joseph was abused, he was abandoned, he was sold. All of these are bad things that eventually led to good things, right? And Pharaoh's heart being softened, another leader's heart being softened. So in the, from our perspectives, we could see these things and think, oh, this is just a bad thing happening, but God will use that for goodness, right? And I often find myself relating to that abuse, Joseph, in the bottom of a pit, asking myself, why are these bad things happening to me? But this song teaches me, and it's a really encouraging, but also really hard truth, that the bad things that are happening to you will always, always be overcome by God's goodness. Always, 100% of the time. No matter how evil or rotten of a thing that you are going through, God's goodness will overcome one way or another throughout some time of history. These are the questions that I wish I had real answers to, but they really are just so vague and abstract. But that is something that is true. It's 100% true. God's goodness will overcome those bad things, right? It's hard to hear, harder to accept, but in my own experiences, I can say truly that it is the only thing that helps when you're looking at looking at that fire, when you're looking where you where you see your demise happening, believing that even if that demise comes in the most horrible way that you think it can, or this relationship gets severed in this brutal way, God's goodness will prevail. It will. So thank you, Melissa, for writing that, writing these verses and writing this song. I'm just going to go uh, real quickly here to the last verse that she writes. I'm just going to share it with you verbatim here. Uh, She writes in her third verse of If Not, Pandemics, racial wars, political uproar, anger, fear, and rumors threaten comfort, peace, and what we hold dear. Oh God, you've got this, don't you? I don't know what is going to happen and I don't pretend to, but I believe you are going to do what you say. Maybe in a hundred years, and if it's not today, you are still good. Maybe in a hundred years, and if it's not today, You are still good, especially coming out of the pandemic, right? We can all relate to that and praying, when is it going to end? Maybe we had a big meeting or a big interview or something that was canceled because of the pandemic or a big business, something, something that we were really excited for and it got canceled because of the pandemic. And we would be praying, please, God, I just hope the restrictions can let up so that I can have this big fundraiser thing or whatever, whatever it may be in your life. I just, please, I want, but it didn't. Right? But it didn't. But God didn't answer that prayer the way that you prayed it. Was God not good? No. God is still good. And that's what Melissa is trying to teach us with the song. And that's why it's such an important song. Why I'm so blessed to be able to spread it on the airwaves. Because so often you hear that argument from non-believers that it's a fair argument. If God is good, why didn't he answer my prayer when I had a sick mother? If God is good, why didn't he heal my leg quicker so I could play in the soccer tournament? right? Whatever it is. Um, But what Melissa is trying to teach us, and it's a struggle. I've talked to her personally about it. It's a struggle that her and I have both shared in our lives. That feeling of like, I I think you're only good if you do this. This is the best outcome. God, you are good if you do this, right? But this song, and this is why, I mean, why artists write music that speaks to them truly, that Melissa had this transformative moment where God came to her and said, no, Melissa, God is good if or if not. His God, his goodness is not dependent on your rubric of how you grade it, right? We have such a limited understanding of those two things that we often use to define God, goodness and love. I love those definitions of God because they're, they're so abstract. And the only things that can really define God for me are more abstract things because it is such a, it's an insane idea. Um, but the belief that God is good if. Or if not, is something I pray all of you can hold on to. So I'm going to give that to you in a prayer right now. Heavenly Father, please, for everybody listening, myself included, as I listen to the words that that I speak, hang on to that belief that your goodness is not dependent on 
on us in any way, shape, or form. It's not dependent on our expectations. It's not dependent on our actions. Your goodness is eternal. Your goodness is truth. Um, your goodness is is the biggest forever we can even think of. So I, I just pray for all of those people that are experiencing um, the if nots in their life that are experiencing the, 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 the moments where they feel like you don't answer, that they can be given peace, God, that they can be given comfort, that your goodness and your overwhelming force of love and goodness is what will prevail in the end. A hundred percent of the time that your goodness is not dependent on us and that you are good if, or if not in your holy name, we pray. Amen. Hey man, thank you so much for listening. Hopefully that wasn't too long. Um, yeah, this has been an absolute uh, blast. Like I said, hopefully we have all the links and stuff in the descriptions. Feel free to come up and talk to me anytime at church. Ask me about what I'm doing at CIM. Ask me about other songs, other pieces of music that pierce me because I always love to chat about it. Um, until the next one, we'll catch you there. See you later. Peace be with you. Mm-hmm.